been formed, was just around the corner. And Sir Thomas Rowe brought with him the telescope and many pairs of spectacles, these eyeglasses. Now, this is just the time that Galileo had been working on shaping lenses and he had discovered how to make the telescope and he had persuaded the people around him to, to look through those telescopes at the skies and this is how the moons of Saturn were discovered and so much more. Now, when Shah Jahan was uh, offered his telescope and Thomas Rowe said, your highness go out look at the sky, he did. And he said, oh, it's very nice, the moon looks so big. And he put on the glasses and he says, yes, now I can see further and things are sharper. And then other people in the, in the court also tried on the glasses, they looked through the telescope and everyone was very impressed. So Shah Jahan said, I want uh, so many telescopes and I want so many pairs of spectacles and uh, so they were ordered and they were paid for in gold and whatever was the, was the exchange at that time. And so they came and after him, uh, his son and the other Mughals, they also kept buying things. They didn't ask how it works. They didn't want to know or were not interested in learning how to grind lenses. So they kept buying. They bought the spectacles, they bought the telescopes, they bought the other things that were being produced at the time of the scientific revolution. Now let me tell you, this was a very big period, major period of European history. This was just as the scientific revolution was starting. And it was a time of great intellectual ferment also. It was a time when people were questioning how the world works. But the Mughals were not interested because they were not interested in learning how the world works. They were not interested in, in cause and effect. They were, they, they were passive. He said, हाँ दुनिया चलती है ऐसी चलती है और चलती आई और चलती रहे क्या इसमें ढूंढ सबब मुसबब इल्लत मालूल ये क्या ढूंढा जाए? They were not looking for causes and so they weren't interested in the kinds of things that were being produced by the scientific revolution over there and it was not just the physics part of it they were lots of interesting diseases that were now coming to India because the British were bringing them. The British brought cholera. The British brought scurvy. You see, because of those long voyages, you had all sorts of new things that were coming up. Syphilis, very interesting syphilis. Yeah. Gonorrhea, all sorts of diseases. Now, there was some effort to understand them and some effort at recording the data, but it was very fragmentary. It was, yeah, you would record some things and miss out other things. And so this was, this did not allow for any systematic way of studying these, these diseases. And so if you think about this, look, the Mughal Empire lasted 400 years. They built the most beautiful architecture. They built the Taj Mahal. They, they built the Bachai Mosque. They, there was the Red Fort of Delhi. There was this Shalimar Gardens, etc., etc. And there was the most magnificent architecture. Did they build a single university? Not one. Zero scholarly achievement. Kuch bhi nahi kiya. Well, in Europe, things were churning. 
a new world was being made. It was old ideas being thrown out, new thoughts coming in. It was the period that was transforming the world. Now, the most important thing that was happening at that time was that people were looking between cause 